This is a family photo of Tina and Dean Klaus with their baby, Holly. The portrait of a puzzling true crime case that took four decades to piece together. Take a look. Dean Klaus's family says he was an easygoing young man growing up in Florida in the 1970s. His family was concerned about the time he spent with a religious group who wandered the area in white robes that some regarded as a cult. They were thrilled when Dean met his girlfriend, Tina. They married, had a baby named Holly, and left Florida to start a new life in Texas. But shortly after arriving in Texas, they were never heard from again. And for the next four decades, the family's fate remained a mystery. The same year they disappeared, a baby was brought to an Arizona church by women dressed in white robes, who asked the pastor and his wife whether they would take care of the baby. Hundreds of miles away in Texas, a male and female body were discovered, bound and decomposed. One had been strangled, the other beaten to death. The limited forensic tools of the time would keep their identities hidden for 40 years. But in 2021, advancements in DNA technology and forensic genetic genealogy helped identify those remains as Tina and Dean Klaus. But what happened to baby Holly? It would take the work of investigators in three states to solve the mystery that Holly was alive and well, a 42-year-old mother of five working as a waitress in Oklahoma. Just last year, Holly found out she had been missing for four decades, and she was reunited with her biological family that never gave up hope that she was alive. Yeah. What a story. <laughs> Holly Marie has written a book about her life called Finding Baby Holly, and she's here with us today. Please welcome Holly Marie. Thank you so much. Thank it's a great you. honor to be here. Thank you, all of you. Well, thank you for being here. Your story is incredible. Um, you always knew you were adopted, but you were 42 when you found out that you had been missing for your entire life. A year ago, investigators showed up at your job to tell you this. What went through your mind when you heard this? Oh, my uh, mixed emotions, definitely. Um, you have the tragedy of my parents' murders. Yeah. That just was so overwhelming. Uh, my heart with sadness. Um, and then you have the other piece, the, the biological family that had been searching for me, and not just searching, but praying for me to be oh. found. Wow. And um, I just was so joyful for the family that wanted to find me all these years, that had been praying for me to be safe and found, yeah. but yet so, so sad for my parents' murders. Yeah. Such conflicting emotions, I can imagine. Wow. Um, but you actually met your biological family over Zoom the same day you found out that they even existed and that they'd been looking for you. And then about a, a year later, you met them, last year you met them in person. What was that like? Oh, um, you know, because they were praying for me, I knew that they were a faithful family, mm -hmm. yeah. which is something very important to me that, you know, my adopted dad gave me my mm -hmm. faith in God. And so um, just knowing that, that they were faithful and um, knowing that they were loving, faithful family, it was just so exciting to get to meet them, you yeah. know? I mean, uh, my dad, my adopted dad, he's from England, and so his family, you know, is across the ocean. We yeah, can't yeah. go see and, and be with one another. So I've always kind of had a craving for family because of that. Oh. And then here I have this, this huge <laughs> biological <laughs> loving and faithful family that prayed for me to be found. What and God nice answered thing. their prayers. It's wonderful that you have this big family of your own and also this extended. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you say you were raised mostly by your adopted father. His name yes. is Philip. Yes. <clears throat> what had he told you about how he first met you and what he thought could have happened to your biological parents? You know, um, he always told me the truth and how I came to him. Mm. And um, he always told me that the, the, these women in white robes brought me to him. And my uh, biological parents had joined this religious group because well, he didn't they tell had. You they were dead. Well, he didn't know he didn't, he that. Didn't know, right. No, right. no, yeah. no. Um, just that um, the women in white robes told him that my parents joined this uh, religious group. Yeah. And in this group, you have to give up your children, your possessions to follow the way they live. And so that's what 
you know, they did. And my, my adopted father always said, you know, they loved you and you're a special gift to us. And um, I've always kind of thought that, you know, my biological parents were this, this holy or the did doubt. You, did to, you feel abandoned by life. them with that story? You know, um, I was able to reconcile that, I think, in a way, um, just mm. because of my faith in God. And because of my dad, you know, my adopted dad loved me so much. But, I mean, yes, there were times in my life where, you know, I did want to know more about them. I had this craving for, for more family. So, yes, in a way, um, I did feel um, abandoned from that, I guess, in a way, yeah. Well, your parents' murder is still unsolved. And investigators don't believe that anyone they have interviewed in the religious group was involved. But do you have hope? that your parents, um, the murder will one day be solved and you'll feel a sense of justice? Oh, yes. Uh, that's my prayer and my mm -hmm. hope is that somebody that has some information about the women in white robes that gave me to my dad or the information on my parents' murders, um, just their travels in this cult would, would come forward and be able to um, let us know what happened to them because in my belief they they died escaping they were murdered from escaping this cold yeah yeah, yeah. and violently too i mean mm -hmm. somebody that an act of punishment punishment mm -hmm. crime that's yeah. what it sounds it, like. it would be odd that no one uh in the cult is involved i'm surprised that the investigators and, and are you surprised that the investigators it's have too separate we're talking people. about two separate it talk about the folks that adopted you are not involved. No, and it, no, yeah. no, they're not. I'm, I'm they're talking not about the, no, um, no. the investigators have interviewed people that yes. are part of the religious cult, you said? Yes, they have. And they don't feel that any of them were involved they're, um, or had knowledge of the crime? They're kind of at a standstill. Nobody actually can say that they knew my mom and dad, Dean and Tina Klaus, hmm. only that they heard of them. And that they, um, you know, in one of the uh, testimonies, I guess you probably saw it on 2020, yes. you know, that they knew of Dean and Tina's car, but didn't see them, if you noticed in the interviews. So, I mean, it's just okay. a lot of things to me doesn't add up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's still so many questions in this case. So I, surely there's somebody out there, a witness, who, who knew yeah. of their travels with them, who knew them and said, can say, yes, I was with those women with the white robes who gave you. Or I was, you know, with them during their travels of this cult. Right. Or that they knew the murders. The well, murderers. there's always fear about coming forward, I would imagine. Um, obviously, after what yes. happened to your parents, it would be tremendous there may, there fear to fear. tell the truth. Well, let me ask you this. You know, there are thousands of families searching for loved ones in this country every year. We talk about it on our show. Um, what are you hoping that your story does to help your families, these families, your, your book, your testimony? So um, in my book, I talk about this. Um, there is an organization that um, evolved out of the search for me mm. called Genealogy for Justice. And a fund was formed called uh, Dean and Tina Lynn Klaus Memorial Fund mm. in memory of my parents. And with this fund, the uh, genealogist who found my biological dad, Allison Peacock, and my biological family, mm -hmm. um, they are board, board members and they gather together to be able to um, solve more unidentified oh. unsolved So there's hope out, out there. there. Yeah. So that we can, t our family's hope and prayer is that my parents' tragedy would be miracles for many other families out there yeah. so that Wonderful. their healing and restoration can Never begin like ours hope. has. Yeah. Never Wonderful. give up hope. Never give up. Never That's give right. Up hope. You never give up. You Ever. keep praying. You That's keep right. asking until God makes it right. There you go. Yeah. Our thanks to Holly Marie. Thank Her you. new book, Finding Baby Holly, is out today.